The six-year-old girl left hospital. The first stage of a remarkable recovery complete. She has made an excellent recovery from her injuries and she's delighted to go home and we are delighted that she's going home in the good spirit. She's a very brave girl and an excellent kid. Home, the doctors say, is now the best place for Roxana's physical and mental wounds to heal. Her family immensely grateful for the public's reaction. I can only say it through my heart that I'm so grateful to them, you know, what they have done for us. They have been so, so nice. I just can't, you know, I just can't describe it. They have been, you know, very kind. Roxana will be left with some permanent scarring to her back. Her face has escaped lasting damage, but it is the potential psychological problems which could yet prove the most harmful. Two more pig farms on Humberside have been quarantined because of fears over a highly contagious disease. Some farmers are calling on the government to introduce compulsory slaughter and compensation in cases where blue ear pig disease is confirmed. Beverly Pig Market. It attracts farmers from all over the north. The four suspected cases of blue ear pig disease on Humberside are so far unconfirmed. But farmers here are already very worried. The illness, which leads to circulation problems in pigs, causing bluing of the extremities, has already swept across mainland Europe. Breeders say it could decimate the industry over here. It'll have serious effects. Because you aren't going to have the, the number of pigs to, to keep going. What sort of impact do you think it could have on the industry if, if they were to be confirmed? Well, it's the same as the cattle disease. It would put the public off, wouldn't it? Uh, I just hope and pray that it didn't confirm. There's already evidence that the price of pigs at auction has been affected by the scare. The Ministry of Agriculture says the results of tests being carried out on the four herds on Humberside won't be known for two to three weeks. Postal services across the region have been disrupted today by a strike at main post offices. Members of the Union of Communication Workers picketed some offices after rejecting a 6.8% pay offer. One of the worst hit areas was Sheffield. Unions say the action will hit the collection of benefits and pensions, although the delivery of letters isn't affected. A man died today during a race between two stolen cars in Leeds. He's been named as Alan Dawson, who was 19 and from the city. He died when the red Peugeot 309 he was driving careered off the Leeds ring road at Adel. The car was sliced in two after hitting a lamp post. A second stolen car also crashed, but the driver ran off. The police are appealing for him to come forward. Cricket news now and a stunning victory for Yorkshire today in the quarter-final of the Benston Hedges Cup at Headingley. The Yorkshire team set Warwickshire 234 to win, but the visitors crashed to a dismal 111 all-out, thanks chiefly to a sparkling bowling performance by the Yorkshire captain Martin Moxon. He took five wickets for 31 runs. An achievement made him man of the match. We stuck at it. We... We played great, I'm absolutely delighted. And the crowd really got behind you, didn't they? Yeah, well, they will do if we're winning. And the semi-final now? Looking forward to it. Finally, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh is the guest of honour at tonight's Cutler's Feast in Sheffield. The Duke arrived earlier this evening at the Cutler's Hall in Sheffield for the annual event, which draws together businessmen and civic dignitaries. Among those attending tonight, the South Yorkshire Chief Constable, followed by the Council Leader Clive Betts. Tomorrow, the Duke will accompany the Queen on her visit to South Yorkshire full and first coverage of the day's events on calendar. We're back tomorrow. Hello, and time now for the late evening weather check. Well, right throughout this week, the weather's been dominated by high pressure, and usually at this time of year, we would expect something quite pleasant out of it, dry with some sunshine, but it's been just the opposite, overcast and pretty cool. And the temperatures are rather interesting. Let's start by having a look at what they were at midday today. Well, there we can see scattered around the region, the best at about 12 centigrade, but generally 10 or 11 degrees centigrade. And the average for this time of the month would be 17 centigrade, so we're way, way below what we would normally expect. 
So let's have a look at today's weather chart and see the culprit responsible. Well, I said it would be dominated by high pressure, and you can see that high pressure between northern Scotland and Iceland, and with those winds coming from a rather cool north or northeasterly direction, no real weather fronts to bother about. Now things are changing only very slowly, and if I show you tomorrow's chart, we can see that that high pressure has slipped away more towards the northwest there, but we've still got those rather cool winds. Now we can see a weather front there, a cold front to the north of the country, during the course of the next few days, that will work its way gradually towards us. There's a chance there might be a spot or two of rain out of that one on Sunday, and perhaps even some brighter weather behind it. But not much brightness around overnight. It's going to remain cloudy right throughout the night. At the moment, most places are dry, but I think in the next few hours, there will be spots of drizzle turning up in places, and some low cloud will give some fog on the high ground, and perhaps some mist and fog along the coast there. Temperatures though, not a cold night, I think the lowest temperature about 8 degrees centigrade, that's 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Moving on to tomorrow morning, well that's how we start. Overcast right across the region, a little bit of drizzling places, some fog patches along the coast and the northern hills there. Things I think improving during the course of the day, most of the inland fog clearing away and most places becoming dry, but we will keep fog near that coast again. And again, temperatures, well disappointing, 12 centigrade is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So with that, tomorrow's summary chart. This Thursday at 7, Emmerdale, and Chris still manages to provoke Cathy. Did you get the car stuff? Yes. You could have given it to me, Christopher. You didn't have to post it. Well, I thought it was better to send it, and we didn't have to have another confrontation. What? Like now? A woman has to decide whether to remain a silent witness next. <laughs> I'm starving. Tonight, may I recommend the grill steaks made with pure ground beef, shaped into a juicy steak, served perhaps with an exquisite side garnish of pommes frites, petit pois, and les champignons? Nah. All right, what about chips, peas, and mushrooms? Yeah. <laughs> grill steaks from the Bird's Eye Steakhouse, the stamp of great tasting meat. A woman sees her brother-in-law commit rape. She is the silent witness. Can you believe it? We're at it again. The house freaks. 